Hey, you're watching Back of the Room with Matthew Gill for Punchline Magazine here at the world famous Comedy Store with one of the greats, Bill Burr. Uh, Bill just came out with a DVD called Let It Go on October 5th. Just had a Comedy Central special. How do you feel after all that heat? All that heat? Uh, I'm hoping the heat continues. <laughs> Dude, when I first started doing comedy, it's like I, I started looking at my old VHS tapes to switch them over to DVDs because, you know, when my VCR breaks, I don't, are they still selling? VCRs, and, you know, I might have been the worst comic in the history. Like, first of all, I would get on stage. I was so nervous. I'd take the mic out of the mic stand, and I would immediately just start pacing, <laughs> like a panther, and, 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 it, and it had like a nervous panther <laughs> <laughs> who got declawed and defanged. Yeah. And I was just walking back and forth, and my movement had nothing to do with what I was talking about. I can't even believe I got any laughs. I would just be like, yeah, so I was growing up, and my dad was crazy, and it was just like, it was like that thing, you know, the old carnival game where you try to shoot the duck. That's what I looked like, and it's at, and I'm pouring sweat, and I would be so nervous. I would I'd be on stage for six minutes, and I would, I would be winded yeah. from telling jokes. I'd be like, <laughs> you see this in the news? I mean, I was, I was horrible. I was horrible, and uh, it took me a long time before I could even watch myself. I wish I had so I could actually see that and see how awful I looked and, and maybe I could uh, try to begin the process of working on myself. Do this because I don't want to have a job. I just <laughs> like being able to fuck. Like, you know what I love about this interview right now? There's zero preparation. I don't have to do shit. I was watching the fucking Jets Miami game last night. I had a couple of beers. Hanging out with my dog. I had a great fucking time. There was no like, oh, I got this big meeting tomorrow. I got to hit my PowerPoint. It's graph how comedy exists. There's none of that. I just show up. You know, I don't have a boss. Yeah. And I get to go on stage and I get to vent frustration. I get to fuck around. I get to do, uh, you know, basically, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I, I know some friends of mine who have like real jobs. I'm like, dude, I'm so jealous of your job that you can go on stage and tell people to go fuck themselves when they're out of line. It's like, I can't do that even when people are out of line and they, like, you know. If yeah. I could bring anything into the real world of business, you ought to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I was working in a warehouse and there was a, uh, there was a dude who worked there who was into comedy the same way I was. And this is how much nerds we were. <clears throat> on like Friday nights or Saturday nights, whenever Stand Up Spotlight came on, rather than going out and trying to get laid, we would sit in his, uh, his bedroom, which he had totally hooked up with like a lazy boy and all this shit. That's a whole nother fucking story. And we would just sit there drinking, <laughs> watching, watching stand up and, you know, waiting for somebody funny to come on. And he would just say, the classic comedians, all nerds. Yeah. So we just, for the most part, and we just would sit there going, he would just be like, dude, that, these people aren't funny, man. We're funnier than these guys. And then one night he was just like, one of these days I'm gonna take a shot of Jack and I'm gonna go on stage and just, give it a shot and then all of a sudden it didn't seem like what was on TV was like impossible yeah. and then all of a sudden it was sitting next to me and I was just like well fuck it if he can try it I can try it and I was failing miserably at everything else in life I didn't have a girlfriend I was like in my third year of college and I was still a freshman um, and I was totally depressed and didn't realize I was just walking around with this fucking cloud so it just seemed like this one little crack of light I was like I gotta do this so I ended up switching colleges and I went to Emerson and I just started taking classes where I had to get in front of the class, debating classes oh. and uh, I started doing radio and all that. This is probably boring the shit out of people, but this, no, this is no. basic. that's basic what I did and I, I got over being in front and every time I did it, I, I'd get a rush and I just... Oh, what, how do you handle with hecklers? I mean, what do you... I just listen to what they say and then I respond with some form of hate. <laughs> it's more <laughs> like hate speech? Then you yeah, convert no, them? No, but there's different kinds of hecklers. I, I kind of learned from... Uh, two guys I learned the most from would be Greg Fitzsimmons and Jim Norton. Uh, Greg Fitzsimmons was the one who kind of taught me, just listen to them, just keep asking them questions. Eventually, they're going to they're gonna, uh, say something dumb that you can go off on. And yeah. Jim Norton kind of taught me that not every heckle is a mean one. Sometimes someone's just going, oh, that's that's like you. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you don't have to chop their heads <laughs> yeah. up. Dude, what the fuck's your problem, lady? Huh? Why don't you shut the fuck up? And then after the show, they're coming up, I'm just saying I liked you. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, ah, oh, sorry, I just get a little defensive <laughs> yeah. when I'm up there. Seems to be a more likely than the market average for someone to be, you know, depressed or to have, you know, the whole prescription pill thing that's going around. Oh, no, no, you just gotta, you gotta beat the shit. You, you, gotta, you gotta figure out how your brain works. At least that's how mm. it worked for me. And I just would like, like, I didn't understand depression before, so I was basically depressed for like 10 years and had no idea. 
you know, because I was just, well, hey, how are you? How's it going? <laughs> and just like not, not even hearing the voice in my head. So uh, once you kind of figure out and you, and you can, uh, I don't know, I'm going to sound crazy, but hear that voice in your head yeah. that is just saying, yeah, this is all bullshit. This doesn't mean anything. What's the fucking point? And then you just sort of just stand back and just be like, all right, am I going to sit there? Am I going to listen to that? and spoon with it and get dragged down to the bottom of the lake or am I just going to go to the gym? You know? <laughs> go to the gym or go out and try a new bit and just do something that's going to make me excited and get like whatever the fuck that, that natural high thing is because that's what kind of beats it down. I kind of learned that through uh, just people I was, I was um, hanging out with. Yeah. Like I never really analyzed people for like the first 35 years of my life and then after a while I, I, I just sort of uh, somebody told me it was Tom Papa. Give a lot of credit to a lot of comedians in this, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Tom Papa told me. He goes, I, I realized any time I made a big decision in my life, 90% of what people said had nothing to do about my decision. It had to do with them. So once he said that, then I kind of realized, like, you know, when people say, you know, like, wh whatever the hell it is, like, you know, uh, you know, like, dude, you're moving out to L.A.? What are you doing that for, man? I don't know. L.A.'s tough and blah, blah, blah. And back in the day, I would give that person 100% credi credibility. Right. Oh, this fucking person who I've known for five seconds knows everything. And I would just take all that neg negativity, stuff it in here, and go right down to the bottom of the lagoon, you know, and go back on my futon and just sit there fucking eating ice cream. <laughs> yeah, and just hate, yeah. And then it's just like, what the fuck does this person, you know, is this person successful? What do they know? Fuck them. And then yeah. I just sort of, like, it was work, though. It was definitely work. So as far as, like, depression and that, that's how I kind of, have been able to um, get through it. But my thoughts still wake me up in the middle of the night. <laughs> I had, last time I did Letterman, I literally, you know, I always have the nightmare that I bomb. Like the first time I was gonna do Letterman, I told this story a zillion times, I literally had this dream that I was bombing on Letterman, and when I looked over at his, and I looked over at Dave, it was my dad sitting behind his desk, which is literally Psych 101. Whoa. Yeah, Letterman's the father figure. I wanted his approval. So every time I've gone to do Letterman, I'm fucking in the hotel in New York laying there, and I, ha and I, ha I have that stupid nightmare about bombing. Yeah, no, you have to realize that you're, you're out of your fucking mind, and I think it really just going crazy is a really simple thing to do. If you're, first of all, if you're alone, and there's nobody there sort of being like, dude, gonna be all right. Is everything okay? Yeah, yeah. like, hey man, let's, uh, let's go to a ball game. Yeah. <laughs> Wanna get a pizza? You think it a lot. You know? Like, let's have a good time. You, you can either do that. Um, it's very easy to just completely lose your fucking mind. I, I used to think it was hereditary and it isn't. It's like, it, I guess it is, but then there's the other one where you just sort of just keep, and it's like a big ball of yarn. You just keep like, yeah. People are talking about you. Nobody <laughs> likes you. Are you gonna be that guy who never fucking makes it? And this is big fucking thing on your head. And then you bring it on stage, and then you start bombing, and the whole fucking it's it's brutal. Yeah. That was uh, that was my early thirties, everybody. <laughs> it's one of the big. Uh, that's one of the big. Uh, I guess I don't know what the fucking word is. I'm so dumb. That's the big myths in comedy. Yeah. That you have to be absolutely miserable, and going through all this fucking pain, like. Uh, you really don't. Yeah. You just have to keep challenging yourself in life because then you're going to fail and then you're going to feel like an asshole and then there's your bit. But it doesn't mean you got to walk around, what does it all mean? You know, staring at the fucking sidewalk your whole life. Yeah. Twitter question from Michael Large. If you have a Twitter question, hit me up, Matthew Gill LA. What is the most frustrating part of show business for you? Lately, what's really fucking annoying to me is that I feel like I have a better chance of people watching my special if I wear the same silly hat and repeated a phrase throughout than just going, I'm going to try to put out the funniest fucking special I can. It's that whole uh, what people gravitate towards. We have an autographed copy here. If you uh, were going to be giving yeah, it away. Don't even worry about it. Someone will scan the autograph. <laughs> and download it for free and use it as an app on your fucking smartphone. We'll be giving away this uh, DVD, so please become a fan of Back of the Room on Facebook and Twitter. This is Bill Burr. Go to BillBurr.com. See the man live. Buy the DVD. Yeah, no, don't. Just have October your friend 5th. go there with a the laptop and then Skype it. Yeah. So this is Bill Burr for Punchline Magazine, Back of the Room. Matthew Gill, thank you so much for watching. Thanks, thank, thank you for having us. Definitely. Thank you for having me. Take care, man. <laughs>